So in this video, we're going to look at rectification and we're going to start off with the half wave rectifier. Now an alternating current supply has a sinusoidal waveform that in one revolution of an alternator produces a sine wave as so and one revolution is known as one time period T. And to work out the frequency, the frequency is how many cycles per second, it's simply one over T. So using Yanker, the, uh, it's free to use this, you can download the home license, uh, really good for playing around with electronics, used to be crocodile clips. What we have here is we've got a signal generator, which is could be an alternator, but that's giving out an AC signal, in this case it's 5 hertz, not a lot really, mains would be 50 hertz. But I'll put it to 5 so it's nice and small so we can see the cycles. Um, if I hold the probe over there at that point, so that particular, um, so the sign with the waveform that's on the scope on the graph is the voltage at that point. So just before it enters the diode. Now remember from our previous lesson that we said that a diode only conducts electricity one way, and that's from through the anode to the cathode or pos to neg. The arrow or the triangle is a big clue to which way it flows. So forward is through the, the diode reverse is back so if any current tries to come reverse it'll be stopped it'll block it now remember at the moment the AC supply is the AC supply is going positive negative so it's doing that it's actually bouncing backwards and forwards but at this point here that's the kind of supply that you would get okay so if I press the pause on there you should be able to see that working all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to see um, what happens after the diode so if I right click onto here uh, properties and I put the trace 2 on then what you should see now is the blue is after the diode and if I hide the other trace so let's hide the sine wave you can see now that the diode is only letting the positive cycle through. Let me pause that. So it's only allowing the cycle to come positive. So it's going through, it's going round, back to the signal generator. But when it tries to come negative, remember it's AC, the diode stops in reverse. So you only get peak, a positive value every, so one cycle, every sorry one peak every cycle so the frequency of that would be 25 so it would be 2.5 hertz would be half of that so one miss a cycle one miss a cycle so if we press play that's quite choppy so we've got dc but it's not smooth it's what we call ripple and uh, there's quite a void there so we're literally just getting a blip 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 in terms of the uh, the output there what we can do to enhance that is we can add a capacitor so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a capacitor into this circuit um, so if I get the plus onto there well, being well we should be able to do this to be clear it doesn't want to play So what we've done is I've added a, um, a switch now. So we've got a capacitor there and we've got a switch. So at the moment the capacitor is not switched in. So you can see we've got quite a ripple output. When I flick that capac that uh, switch, it's going to, going to connect the capacitor into the circuit. So here we go. So now you can see we have the capacitor smoothing. So what's happening with the capacitor now is if I press, press pause on there, let's go a little bit more, is on the positive cycle, so on here as the AC supply rises, okay, and it falls, the capacitor discharges. So the current leaves the capacitor and goes into the resistor. So the capacitor starts to power the resistor when there is no supply from the signal generator. Um, and if you notice on there, you'll see the arrows going backwards and forwards. So the capacitor is charging, discharging, charging, discharging. Now you can see on here, um, I've got all the, I just pressed the play, the play button on there. This simulates it really well. 
So the positive, the full sine wave is actually before the diode. Okay, and the blue is after the diode with the smoothing. So you can see there that the capacitor is smooth. And there's quite a peak, there's quite a slope on there. Because what's happening there is the capacitor is actually this whole storing charge is actually draining down. And as the capacitor starts to empty the charge, it the mains comes back up and tops it back up again. Okay. Now if we were to change the value of that resistor there, what will happen is is that slope may get uh, even smaller so i'm just going to try and make that a bit smaller to half the value so when i press pause now that should go even steeper yes it has so if you look there you can see that it's actually it has actually got even steeper so what we're doing now is because we've lowered the resistance the capacitor is draining quicker if i unswitch the capacitor then you can see there the smoothing's gone. So it's just half wave. Put the capacitor back in again and we get some smoothing. If we change the value of the resistor on there, so let's put a 10 in there. Uh, that's not what we asked for. Let's try a 10 again. 10. And you can see it's not as big at the curves suddenly not as steep that's because it's the capacitor takes longer to uh, discharge so that is half wave that's one way of creating a dc um, supply but there is still a ripple okay. so just to recap very quickly on the, the the half wave the diode the one signal diode sorry the power diode in an ac circuit only allows current to go through one way so that you would get the positive when the negative tries to come back the diode blocks it straight line so we end up getting a peak 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 so miss one miss one if we put a capacitor a smoothing capacitor in the circuit then the what will happen is is that it will charge the capacitor then will discharge charge and then suddenly that is the smoothing capacitor is that distance there so it would be from the peak to the ripple that would be known as the dc ripple in there okay so that's half wave that's one way of doing it to get an actual smoother output we can use full wave and to use full wave we can use what we call a four diode bridge rectifier let's look at that next so next we're going to look at the four diode bridge rectifier. So you'll see there we've got four diodes connected in the following configuration. Now you can buy these as a module of four diode bridge rectifier, uh, or you can make them using four power diodes. So how does this actually work? Well, if we look at the output, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just do a very rough sketch of the output and I'll simulate this on the software again. So on the positive cycle, uh, current's going to flow out of our signal generator, out of our AC supply, it can't go through diode one. Um, we'll call it diode one, diode two, diode three, diode four. The current goes through diode four. That, sorry, diode two. Just wrote that down there. Out through our load. Remember, this is AC on the positive side. Comes up to here then goes through and out back to the mains so you will get a positive cycle okay the negative cycle looks so in blue so the negative cycle comes this way but what happens with the negative is the negative as it comes up to this junction it can't go through diode 4 so it goes through diode 3 and goes back through the load and when it comes to diode one goes through diode one and goes back to the supply so the negative is flipped okay so what we end up having is is we have a positive and the negative which normally would be down there is actually diverted through the diodes to be inverted so the four diode bridge rectifier 
inverts a negative cycle to give us positive, 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 and so on. Okay, uh, so unlike the half wave where it misses a section, the full wave is constant, so the frequency is better and we get a much smoother supply. Let's have a look at it on the simulator. So you can see on the simulator now we've got um, three coloured waveforms. The red is the AC supply input, so that's what the main the AC would let the mains. Um, the blue is the point at uh, obviously here, which is looking at that is the negative cycle. So the negative cycle is inverted. The green is the actual value uh, at the load. So if we press play on there, you can see there. Um, um, obviously the, the the whole thing working what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the input signal so let's just click on to this area here and let's hide uh, let's try and get this working a bit better traces let's get rid of the first trace um, so now you should be able to see there the whole let's try that again there it's a bit better you can see we have that full wave going on. It's not the not the best. Uh, let me just try one second. Yeah, that's better. Um, that seems to have sorted it. Um, so you can see there the full wave in action. Okay, so the negative cycle, which is the green, has been inverted. What we're going to do now is we're going to connect, try to connect this capacitor in and see what happens to the output. There we go. So green is the output you can see there, much, much smoother. Okay, so if I hide the, uh, so the blue is still a little bit of AC, that's before the capacitor, that's why we're getting the uh, the ripple there. So if I hide the blue, um, so then you can just literally see the output, um, which I'll just do that there. Try and restart this a bit better. So there's a bit of a sawtooth on there. So if we look at the actual uh, on the on the simulator between 7.9 and about 8.55 volts. So we've got a voltage ripple there of uh, what have we got there? So about 0 0.7 of a volt ripple. So instead of it being AC, I mean that's actually obviously zoomed in quite close there. There that ripple. Um, but you can see effectively that's how the smoothing capacitor changes um, the ripple into more of a straight line. Yeah, this this is a bit better now with this simulator. So you can see there the the blue at that point. So that's half a cycle there, um, and the green at the actual load. So you can see the capacitor that's actually smoothing nicely on there, with them all working nicely. Um, just press the pause for a second. So red is the input. Blue is half of the rectifier working. Uh, that's the, in, uh, the negative side. And green is the output. So you can see the capacitor that's smoothing that out there. Okay, so that's pretty much the difference between half wave and full wave rectification. So full wave, you get a much more because it's uh, obviously it is a full wave, so there's no there's no troughs if you like. Um, it's more of a pulsating DC. Um, it's a much more uh, reliable uh, or constant supply. Still not exactly DC. Still not a straight line, but it's very very close. What we could do now is uh, we could actually fit there some kind of regulation on there, which would smooth that line even further. So at the moment the voltage is looking at that. It looks to me about just under eight volts between eight and uh, well, seven and eight and a half volts. That's what we looked at on the scale there. That's where it's oscillating. If we set the voltage at about uh, seven volts, then we would be able to get a perfect straight line in regulation. Uh, but we don't really need to go into that at this stage. So I hope that uh, clears up uh, the difference between uh, half wave and full wave rectification. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you've liked the video, uh, obviously, uh, just, uh, please give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.